Hello. Hello. It's wonderful to be with all of you today. Very nice having you with us. Thank you for your time. Um, what's the weather in Miami right now? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm in uh, Plantation, Florida, which is a little north of Miami, which is where my home is. And it is a beautiful, sunny day in the low 70s. What's okay. It like what's it like in Berlin, Thomas? Sunny, cold, but sunny. <laughs> okay, the sun, sun <laughs> that, that's, that's the main thing, exactly. So, <laughs> right. Lisa, um, you were certainly observing very closely what happened in Europe, uh, which resuming, cruise lines resuming, TUI cruises is one, MSC, Hapag, Lloyd, oh. Ponant, yeah. some of them. Um, what were you, how, how much are you uh, curious or keen in learning or maybe also telling uh, the national, um, um, the, the CDC, your national health protection agency, right? Um, yeah. That it is really possible. It is possible. Uh, it is feasible. Uh, what's the situation in the U.S.? When are you going to resume cruises in the U.S.? Oh, Thomas, I so wish I had the answer to that question. Um, that would be uh, uh, that would be a, that would be a joyous day for me when I can answer that question. We we currently do not know when we will be able to resume cruising um, in the U.S. But what I will say is every day the future looks a little brighter and every day we get one day closer to that day happening. Um, I think you're all watching what's happening in the United States with the vaccine. The rollout is going better than we could have expected. There's a lot of optimism and there's a lot of pent up demand here in the U.S. consumer market. People want to go on their vacation. They really want to go on their cruises. And I hear from celebrity guests all the time that they can't wait to get back on a celebrity ship. I think booking, right? As, right. Sorry to interrupt you. I think booking figures are, are strong, right? Yes. No, yes. We're very optimistic in what we're seeing, uh, not only for the latter part of 2021, but also 2022. Um, I'm sure you all follow the news here in the United States. And President Biden did say that by the end of May, all, um, all, of, all people in the U.S. who want a vaccine will have been able to have the vaccine. And so that has instilled a lot of optimism in consumers to uh, be able to take their vacations again before the, this year is over, but certainly into next year. And, um, you know, to your other question, Thomas, about uh, what's going on in Europe and in other parts of the world, we are, we are very much watching that. And um, we're so impressed by every Everything that you know, my friend Vuka is doing with uh, with Tui Cruises and Pierre Francesco with MSC, Hapag Lloyd starting up. You know what it proves is that our industry is best in class as it relates to controlling an environment and keeping our guests and crew healthy and safe. And then, of course, our sister brand, Royal Caribbean, um, is operating in Singapore, has been for a while with Cruises to Nowhere, and has announced that they will start up cruising in Israel uh, within the next couple of months. So, again, light at the end of the tunnel. We're very optimistic, and we're all looking forward to uh, when we're all back in business. Do you think this will have an impact also um, on resuming operation um, in, in the US? Uh, is that having a positive impact or are you having your own agenda? Uh <laughs> uh, well, listen, I know that the CDC is watching what's going on in the rest of the world, but I think it's very clear to us that um, they really have their own agenda as it relates to ensuring that um, American citizens are in an environment that they believe is um, is healthy and safe, but um, uh, they are watching what is going on. And, you know, I think Pierre Francesco mentioned this in his comments as well. The vaccine changes everything. Yeah. And so the conversations are, you know, much more positive. And I think we all have a lot more confidence given the you know, given the availability and the distribution of the vaccine. And the one thing I will say about Europe is it would be good to see the same momentum in Europe as we're seeing in the UK and the US with the distribution of the vaccine. 
Yeah, I think that's a big issue, right? Uh, here we could yeah. do, I think, much better than, for yeah. example, you are doing right now. Absolutely yeah. true. Um, what do you think can the industry, uh, the other industries uh, than the cruise industry, learn from your best practice um, uh, examples? Because we, as you mentioned, uh, the industry proved that it can operate very safely with very stringent hygiene and safety protocols and carrying over 300,000 people very safely. I mean, that's a very impressive figure. What would you see? What would be your message uh, if you could tell this for other industries? What could we learn from the cruise industry? There's so much that can be learned from the cruise industry. And one of the things that I find very interesting is that the cruise industry is really always going above and beyond uh, as it relates to protocols. Okay. Uh, you know, this pandemic is only one instance where we, um, we take uh, what we need to do to the very highest level to keep, uh, again, our guests and crew safe and healthy. And I think the industry, every industry can learn, whether it's in the hospitality and tourism industry, because it's really important that everybody that's traveling, not only on cruising, on cruise ships, but also the places that we're visiting, that they feel that the environment they're, they're going to be in is practicing the highest level of protocols. And uh, I, I think that yeah. I don't think that just the governments are watching what the cruise industry is doing. I think the rest of the tourism and hospitality industry is watching as well. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just heard that uh, Vipke is joining us right now. So she's ready. Ah, oh, no, she's not ready yet. Okay, well, let's talk. We, we, we could... I, I, I'm ready. No, no, I'm here. Sorry. Ah, uh, Vipke is here. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we could, Lisa, we could go on for hours. Unfortunately, yes, we don't have the time. Yes, <laughs> but if, if Vipke is here, um, I would just see. Okay. Okay. Um, but can we hear Vipke? Because I can't see her picture. Well, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Okay. okay, I can talk to you. Okay, no, no problem. We have no picture, no problem. But we can, we can talk to you. I First of all, check. hello, Vipke. Hello. Hello. Thank Hi. you. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for joining us as well. Vipke, you have a lot of experience, uh, or some experience in uh, resuming cruises. You did some cruises to nowhere, the Blue Voyages, right? Uh, then you had port of calls in the Canary Islands in, in a so-called safe bubble. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the experience you did? I think that was a hell of an experience, right? To reinvent the wheel uh, under such circumstances. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was uh, right after we, we brought the last passengers and the last crew safely home uh, after we were all in the middle of the first uh, wave of the pandemic that was in March, April. Then we were of the opinion uh, that we need to find a concept how we can make uh, cruises possible, even in times of a pandemic. And we also wanted to show for our passengers and also for our crew that a ship isn't necessarily an environment where people will contract the virus. Uh, so we gathered excellent experts uh, like Lisa, I, I guess Lisa, you explained it uh, pretty much the same than you did in the US. Uh, epidemiologists, virologists, uh, travel medicines, and so on, to to come together to see how we can how we can make it possible. And the concept was was very clear. We adopted what we all learned so far doing on land, uh, keeping the distance, uh, less people. Uh, minimizing the occupancy and of course wearing a mask where uh, distance keeping is not possible. Uh, so that, that was the first part. Uh, and then it took us two months uh, where we needed to convince uh, the German ports in that case because Germany uh, in, in summer uh, the, the travel ban was, was still ongoing. Uh, but we tried to convince the German ports that they uh, approve our concept and let people go on board. And that was in that time, uh, we had an, uh, a seven days incident here in Germany of four. So uh, we said we, after more or less three months of lockdown, we want to uh, bring our passengers back on board. Uh, and uh, we finally succeeded uh, with uh, some adoptions uh, and uh, a really, really strict protocol. Um, and uh, then it was uh, um, enhanced from from months to months. And we really started. That was that was. And we we were seen quite uh, many people were concerned. Is that attractive? Because we really started with we called them blue cruises, with cruises to nowhere. The people just came on board uh, and had a few days on the Baltic Sea or North Sea, getting a fresh 
fresh breeze, but it was a cha- it, it was a difference to to what they have experienced the months before, and we got. But you know, they. I think I think may I interrupt you. They were keen. They were keen. Finally, seeing the sea again. <laughs> Um, feeling the sea, feeling the air, sunshine, whatever colors, whatever also sea voyage um, includes. And I, I think the need of people to break out, I think that was felt very clearly, right? Is that your experience as well? Absolutely. Uh, and I mean, for that for, for, for that time, uh, Germans were more or less only allowed to, to travel within Germany. And we know that Germany is a great, great uh, country with a lot of great uh, destinations, but also with, uh, with, with limited uh, uh, accommodation. So that was another opportunity. And apart from that, we, of course, had a lot of, of, of our, our really loyal customers who said, why can't we go on board? It's, it doesn't matter if you cannot call a port, but we just want to be on board and want to relax and we want to go out we want to have the fresh air and um, and see uh, and, and to have to have a change after more or less three months of lockdown and, so you, didn't, was the first. and you didn't have another choice right um, people were really right. locked down and so at least yeah. uh, on the on a ship you you could have some more relaxing time again um, Lisa I have one question I have two questions one for Lisa one for Ripke but one very specific question I know that uh, you're very keen on that uh, Lisa um, Yesterday, we celebrated International Women's Day, and I know that you are very, very active in this front. Um, we also have this all-female bridge, right? And I think we have also a picture, prepared a picture where we, the, the people can see what it means. So a bridge, a ship bridge of a so far quite male-dominated area, all women. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know that you gender diversity is a big issue for you. And uh, because we, we don't want to hear only negatives, we are talking about Corona, Corona, Corona all the time, right? So here's also a positive story about how the cruise industry can do an impact for the maritime world, but probably also for the whole rest of the world. Can you just let us know a little bit about this? Absolutely. Thank you for the question, Thomas. You know, it is Women History Month and you do have two women CEOs of cruise brands uh, as your guests today. So that's that's always wonderful. Um, but uh, yesterday and I have purple on because, you know, it's the it is the color for um, International Women's Day. And yesterday we celebrated the one year anniversary of our barrier breaking and history making cruise where on Celebrity Edge. The entire bridge was manned by women uh, and the entire leadership team on board the the ship uh, was women. And, you know, I encourage anybody to go take a look at that video um, on social media because it was a very, very special time for all of us. And what it was is it was really the culmination point of a day that we could use to celebrate all the progress that Celebrity has made over the last five or six years. We are now up to 28% of our bridge team uh, are now women, and that's up from 3% when I took over um, back in late December of 2014. So, you know, listen, we, uh, we our environment on cruise ships is extremely diverse. It's, a, it's wonderful to look at all the cultures, nationalities, colors um, of people that come from all over the world. But clearly women are significantly underrepresented in our industry. And, you know, as a woman um, CEO, I feel like I have an opportunity to make a difference and pay it forward and give women an opportunity that they might have never had before. So, um, yes, so we celebrated the one year anniversary of that yesterday. And we also um, had, I was able to join eight of the women that I cruised with on that cruise and uh, listened to what they have been up to over the last year and how anxious they are for all of us uh, to get back to sailing again. Okay, thank you very much. I'm very impressed about that and it certainly will do an impact. And I know that Wiebke and Tui Cruz is there also taking that very seriously. But I have another question for you. We have another um, about three minutes and then, I mean, we, as mentioned before, we could go on for hours. But um, for today, let's, <laughs> let's do, do ITV now in this format. Another question for Wiebke. I know that sustainability, as, as is also for Lisa, is an important part. And I, when we discussed before, uh, you told me that um, uh, South Africa could be an interesting example, changing consumer behavior, uh, that maybe the supply chain could get, be, uh, become more sustainable. Could you maybe uh, tell us some words 
that's what your thoughts are and your projects probably might be? First of all, sustainability has always been key and will be key and even more important after the crisis for all of us being in the tourism sector. Uh, because this is, we are sailing in pristine environments and our customers expect it and we are all very sensible for all this. Uh, and I could write right now, I could talk about all the, the waste we, we are producing since the pandemic uh, or we have been producing. And this would also be one of our projects we are having. We're having a wasteless program, reducing food waste and also eliminating uh, plastic on board and all these things. This is something what we have been doing. Uh, and of course, we, we kept uh, we kept with our strategy uh, and we didn't uh, go back from uh, doing the utmost we can uh, to minimize the impact on the environment for, for cruising in general. Uh, but to have a more, to, to, if we um, determine sustainability also with regards to the destinations, which can be uh, where we sail to, then I think cruising offers also an opportunity. For example, Africa is a continent where, you, where, where not that many ships are, and this could also be used uh, as a good example where the cruise industry can, uh, can, can show that uh, cruising is also sustainable sustainable for the countries where, uh, where we sail to. And in South Africa, we, we hope that the pandemic will allow. We have an itinerary where we visit rather a big ship, uh, although we most probably will sail in winter with less occupancy, uh, that we, we have planned uh, to, to do our first winter season in, in South Africa. Uh, and this could be a spin-off uh, for, for more projects, also to involve the locals uh, and, and also to, uh, when it comes to crewing, one day we, we could see if we can find people who would like to work on board of our ships and, uh, and that. And also with regards to the supply chain, of course, there's a lot we can do, mm -hmm. but this would this would take hours now. I know. Just, but, I just wanted also to have a, a positive. <laughs> yeah, but also what was, uh, but what, but that was not related to South Africa. Uh, what we most probably will do um, to reduce our uh, to our, our CO2 in the future, uh, we all need to drop in uh, alternative fuels to 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 blend them with. I have with to energy. stop here. I, I unfortunately have to stop here because I just have 15 seconds. Two words okay. for everybody uh, for the last question. Um, if you changed uh, your hat of CEO hat to a politician hat, um, what would would you say? What would you implement? Um, you have only yeah, 10 would... seconds, 10 seconds each. What would be the most important message as a politician? Regulations and looking for, for the ways to, to make traveling possible and not just locking it down. And that can be tests, that can be vaccination. And Lisa? Be prepared. I think we all learned that this caught us by surprise. We can't let that happen in the future. The future needs to look different. Sorry for stopping here. Thank you very much. It was very exciting. Time was running. Uh, thank you, Lisa lutuf Perlo from Celebrity Cruises and Wiebke Meyer from TUI Cruises. Thank you for having been with us. And, and back to Roland. Bye. <laughs> thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. All you. the best to Bye. you. Bye. <laughs> Ciao.